is Trisha with Insectopia, and we are here looking at a brand new insect to sketch. Um, I actually have a couple of them in front of me right now. Um, I was thinking we do a hopper of some sort. I do have the frog hopper underneath the microscope right now, but I also have a plant hopper, a tree hopper, and a leaf hopper sitting in front of me. Actually, I have three tree hoppers, but I kind of love them. Although, I was thinking we could do the frog hopper. Um, they have very similar body shapes. There's only a handful of characteristics that kind of make them different. And I know I have Susan here hanging out, and she likes to know a little bit about the taxonomy of these animals. And so, I figure, might as well, I guess what we can do is just, um, uh, my lighting is a little bit wonky. Darken it a little bit. Um, that's better. Alright, so what we can do is we can talk about a little bit about the taxonomy. I can go over and I can show you one of each of the families because I think that that's kind of cool. And we can talk about the, the characteristics that make them, um, the characteristics that make them different. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, That's true, it wouldn't leave much time for sketching. And so, we could just pick frog hopper and talk about what makes it a frog hopper. This is our leaf hopper here. But you really do want to see the differences. All right, so what we'll just do, hmm. Maybe I'll talk. I'm okay with that. You might be able to sketch, you, you might be able to, all right, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to pause the video while we're talking about things, we can sketch. Let's just do it that way. I think that that's a, that's a fine way to do it. And if it gets to the very end and we're looking at a bug and I want to sketch, maybe I live stream just a little bit longer solo. We'll see what happens. So the first one that is underneath our microscope, we might as well talk about it, is a frog hopper. Mmm, where should we start? We're actually going to start one step higher. So all of... All right, so we're going to be talking about a handful of insect families today. So the frog hoppers, the leaf hoppers, and the tree hoppers are all their own family. The plant hoppers are actually a super family. So um, there's actually many different types of plant hoppers underneath that super family. We'll talk about that. Um, but they all belong to what we call... They're not a super family. They are a super family. That's awesome. All right, we'll just talk about it. The, um, how do we start? So, we know that they're all in the, sorry, it took me a minute to figure out where exactly we wanted to start, and I think we're going to start in the order. So they're in this order, Hemipteran, which are the true bugs, and a lot of times Hemiptera stands for half, well Hemi stands for half and Terra means wings, so we're talking about animals with like half membranate front wings, although the insects in this one have either um, fully membranous or fully leathery front wings, like our frog hoppers and our leaf hoppers and actually cicadas. They're all in this um, suborder that we call it. It's called Arinca. I've always had a hard problem pronouncing this one. It's Acanarinca. 
Um, but they're all in this same suborder. So um, they're still hemipterans, but they don't share that same characteristic where they don't have that same type of hemiolytra or half membranous and half um, leathery rings. So we spell this like this. Um, Akanarinka. Now, um, underneath that, you've got all of the cicada-like families. We call them cicadoidea, <laughs> which is fun. So, um, all of the, what we call, all of the super families, or a group of families in the insects, they all end in oidea, O-I-D-E-A. It makes them, one, really fun to pronounce, but two, you can actually see what the original cicadoidea is based off of cicadas, or this family cicadidae. So cicadas were actually the first to be identified out of these families, but within them, you have the leaf hoppers, the frog hoppers, and the tree hoppers. So, all families in an IDAE. This is our cute little frog hopper friend. He has many frog hoppers have this adorable face, horrible face where they have the where they almost look like a frog. They have this very upturned nose and um, they have these big compound eyes. And as we look back on him, you can't see much of the mouth part because he has a long straw-like mouth part that exists in between his legs like all other hemipterans. Now, when we're identifying frog hoppers, we want to look at the very back. Cicadoidea sounds like the nerd cicada that got shoved in the lockers at school. <laughs> yep, that's what it is. <laughs> I love that. Oh, cool. Oid means looks like. So, cicadoidea is something that looks kind of cicada-ish. I love that. Yeah. So, um, oid is what we put at the end of all of our super families. So, that's kind of fun. When we're naming our super families, we're taking the primary family, essentially, and naming an entire group after them. Oh, I like that. I like it a lot. Okay. So, um, this is our frog hopper, and the characteristic for frog hoppers and leaf hoppers to separate the two exists on this hind tibia. All right, so right here, this is where the femur ends, and you've got the tibia here that starts. If you look right around here, frog hoppers are going to have maybe two, maybe three spines on the tibia. You can see there's this one here. There's one more here. It almost looks like just a black spot, but I promise that it's just coming towards us. They might have a couple of spines on the tibia, but their tibia are mostly bare. Then, if you look at the end of the tibia, and this is where the characteristic is that defines the family, there is a circlet of spines at the end of the tibia. So you can see right here, there's these um, series of spines that kind of encircles or goes all the way around the end of the tibia. That is the characteristic for this family. So all frog hoppers have these cute little spines on the end of the tibia. I've seen that. So Susan says that sometimes when they split genuses, genera, sometimes when they split genera, they will keep one genus the same and put oides at the end of the new one. I, I've seen genera with the end oides, and I didn't know that's what I, what that meant. That's awesome. Oh man, I learned something today too. So, this is 
our frog hoppers hind leg. And really that's the main characteristic. They can be colorful, they can be dull, they can have upturned noses a little bit, they cannot. Um, sometimes if you look at them head on, people really do insist that they look like frogs. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how much I believe that they look like froggies, but their characteristic is in their hind legs. Now, a lot of times people ask me, is there any insect that has, that when they have um, ocelli, that they have less than three, right? Because we regularly see ocelli in triangles of three. I believe that these insects we're talking about today, yeah, they just have two ocelli, right here and here. Yeah, there's just two ocelli on frog hoppers. Now, bonus information on frog hoppers, if you're curious, their babies are called spittle bugs because when they um, when they're feeding on a plant, they're taking in all liquids and they produce all liquid, and they create this little bubble nest around them that protects them. And Frog hoppers also are known to have, there's a species of frog hopper that's known to have a, um, a gear on the bottom side of its, hmm, a gear on the bottom side of its, its body where, like, its, uh, hind legs are connected, and it actually helps them jump and keep their legs at the same power and the same strength and the same speed while they're jumping. It's kind of nifty. You've seen spittlebugs! Very cool! So spittlebugs are just baby frog hoppers! They make the bubbles out of their butt, don't they? Yes, they do! I tried to just say that it was, you know, what was left over. It always comes back to butts. Yes, it does. And yes, they do. I, as a child, always thought that the spittle bug nests were created by spittle, and that's why they were called spittle bugs. But as it turns out, it doesn't come out of the front end. <laughs> ah, good times. Don't we love when baby insects protect themselves with the only thing that they have left that has no, like, there's, there's nothing left that they can do with it, so they might as well protect themselves with it. All right, so the next insect, does it keep changing focus? The tension on my microscope changed for some reason. I think the heat changed the, temper the tension on my microscope. There we go. There's a woman at the pine bush who always leads some guided walks in the summertime looking for spittle bugs. Oh, that's cool. We have our first spittle bugs at our butterfly garden. Um, uh, and... Um, I've been showing them to kids. All right, so the next family is Cicadelity. These are the leaf hoppers. Now, leaf hoppers and frog hoppers have very similar body shapes. They still have those um, compound eyes on the side. They have that long mouth part here in the front. The main difference between frog hoppers and leaf hoppers. is in their hind tibia. I love how colorful this insect is. All right, so right here, this is the hind tibia, and I know that it is not exactly even with the microscope. Maybe this will help it so that it'll be more in focus at one time. But you can see on this tibia, there is way, way more than just those two or three spines from the frog hopper. In leaf hoppers, we say that there is one to two rows of spines on the tibia. 
So that's going to be our characteristic to determine between the two. Um, they may have very, they'll have like different shaped heads and sometimes you can just look at the shape of a frog hopper or the shape of a leaf hopper and kind of instinctively know that after you've seen them enough. Leaf hoppers tend to be a little bit more thin and frog hoppers tend to be a little bit, seem to be kind of more robust. But um, when you're identifying them with a character, it's the hind tibia has one to two rows of spines. Would you call these saltatorial legs in both species? I would, yes. They are jump, uh, saltatorial, uh, being jumping legs. Um, I would call them that. Now, they are at a slightly different angle than the grasshoppers, but they still have this really long femur, this really long tibia, and at the base of the tibia, they're still going to have some grippy spines down there at the bottom to help them jump. They're definitely jumping legs. They don't have the ginormous femur, right. Uh, I was hoping I could angle it a little bit. Now, so there is some very, yes, there is some variation in the legs, but I would still call them saltatorial. Um, I definitely wouldn't call them like ambulatory, like walking legs or running legs. So, um, they're, um, like version of saltatorial legs. I don't know if version is the right word for that. Oh, right, so those are leaf hoppers. Now, tree hoppers. It just occurred to you that aphids also look kind of similar to cicadas, and you're wondering if they were in Cicadoidea too. Aphids are not in Cicadoidea. They are actually... Um, I'm, I'm going to double... I, I, have a, um, I have a taxonomic key next to me right now, so I was going to double check where they are. Sternorinka. Ah. So, they are actually in a different suborder. Um, they're still homopterans. Hmm. It's just like an old word people used to use. Um. So you're gonna, so they have very similar, um, so they have very similar, uh, bloop, bloop, bloop wings, right? They've got those, both those membranous wings, and they fold still very similarly over the body. They've got that long mouth part. So the big difference in between the insects that we're seeing right now and aphids and some of the other closer related, so there's aphids and plant lice that are all kind of in this same group. And those are insects that have longer antenna. <laughs> um, the cicadas, leaf hoppers, frog hoppers, tree hoppers, they all have these very, very thin, almost hair like antenna. Whereas aphid antenna are actually fairly long. Oh, it just occurred to me that aphids, yep, yep, yep. You call that a pronotum? This is a pronotum? <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 yes. This right here, this whole thing, this all the way up to the horn and all the way back down, that entire plate is the pronotum. <laughs> Do I think that it's excessive? 
I don't know. So let's talk about it. Tree hoppers, their characteristic, what makes them different than everybody else? You could look at the hind legs, but they all have expanded pronotums. All right, some of them look like this, where you've got this really long horn, and it covers, uh, goes all the way back, it protects their wings, and it protects up at their head, but the thing with this insect in particular is that it, um, it's going to be feeding on a plant that has thorns, so likely rose, but it also might be feeding on like berries, raspberries, blackberries. So, <laughs> yep, it disguises itself as a thorn and then it drinks from the plant that it is sitting on. Uh, and where, where you find these, where you find these tree hoppers, uh, you're gonna find a whole bunch of them and it's kind of cool because they are like seated around all of these thorns and then every time you go um, and then every time you go to like touch the stick or move the stick some of the thorns move <laughs> hi Avea welcome I love that you're sketching blue butterflies. Honestly, I haven't gotten to sketching yet because we're just talking about the hoppers. Um, I believe that Susan was going to probably, I think that Susan is probably sketching a little bit. Um, yeah, so these guys, they always have this expanded pronotum. And because I know that you like to see different adaptations and we're just looking at the insects right now, let's go and look at my other two tree hoppers. Because this one looks like thorns, but they don't always look like they have thorns. Let's see if I can get it right. Here we are. It's good to see you too. I felt like it had been so long since I'd live streamed because I haven't been doing my Sunday live streams and then I was sick with COVID last week so I wasn't able to, to be here. I'm so happy that I'm feeling better. Here we are. These are, this is another type of tree hopper. So instead of it having a horn that projects forward in front of its head, it just has this really wild looking mountain, mountain-esque pronotum that goes all the way back out. That's okay. As it turns out, we're all just hanging out and chatting bugs. And you know what? Sometimes we need that. Um... So this is the pronotum of our of our uh, tree hopper here, and uh, we've got one more. And this last one I think is really awesome because I think he looks like he has a mohawk. That's a pretty good imitation of Devil's Tower. Ooh, is Devil's Tower a rock formation? <laughs> Look how awesome, though. So this is another member acid. I, these are the three that I had sitting next to me, so I figured I might as well share them with you. Um, you can see its abdomen back here. You can see the light colored membranous wings here. And then this entire thing right here that looks like a mohawk and comes all the way back to this point, that's the pronotum. That's the first segment of the thorax just ex expanded back. Um, good sticky out eyes. <laughs> he does have sticky out eyes. I can totally see the orange peel. Now, you may be surprised when I turn him. This is one of these 
tree hoppers that on the front edge has these two spines and he's completely flat along the front of the head but you can almost see there's this really cool kind of star shaped pattern basaltic column thingy sticking up out of Wyoming. Oh, cool. You know what? I believe I have seen Devil's Tower. It's been a minute. <laughs> That's cool, though. No, thank you very much. Yep, so that is, those are our tree hoppers in the family membracity. <clears throat> something that we call plant hoppers. Now, all of the insects that we've looked at so far are in the uh, cicada. They are in the cicadoidea. Now, the next group, the plant hoppers, actually create their own superfamily, so they are outside of cicadoidea. But because they're a hopper and they are still kind of cousins because they're still in that Alcanarinka, which is why I shared Alcanarinka with you. Um, we are going to look at the frog hop or at the at the uh, plant hoppers. There are too many hoppers. big are the tree hoppers? That's a great question. They are fairly small. So if I go and grab this one, the orange peel membracid, and I zoom out all the way because that's how I can measure. I can measure from the front of the head to the back of the abdomen and then we will know. And I'll just use the abdomen, not the wings, I think. So if we go from the front of the head to the back of the abdomen, and move it over to centimeters, because you're not my little students. Uh, it's about 0.79 centimeters. Um, and if we wanted to go at the entire length, because I'm curious, from the front of the head, to the back of the wings, you're still less than a centimeter. So um, this insect is uh, 0.79 from the front of the head to the back of the abdomen and 0.92 from the front of the head to the back of the wings. So pretty tiny. <clears throat> Are plant hoppers different from plant bugs? Yes, they are. Um, that's a great question. They are in two different suborders in Hemiptera. So let's look at them. We're actually now going to be in the super family. Fulgoroidea. There we are. Plant bugs have the cross across their back. Exactly, Susan. Exactly. Um, now you're catching on. The, uh, the plant hoppers are going to have wings similar to a cicada or similar to the other leaf hoppers where they're all kind of one texture. 
Whereas the plant bugs have an axe across their back and they have the half membranous, half leathery wings. So this is our cute little, um, we call them plant hoppers. Uh, here's our cute little plant hopper. Now, there is a huge variety of plant hoppers out there. This is just one of the many. Um, but the characteristic for all for all plant plant hoppers can be found on the head rather than on the legs. Don't forget the white CD around the black eye. Cool. See if I can get a little more light on that. Is that Pinocchio nose part of the head or the pronotum? That Pinocchio nose is part of the head. Uh, plant hoppers are known for having very interesting kind of head shapes. Um, there is one in, what country is that? I believe they're in South America. I don't remember exactly what country they're from, but if you look up peanut bug, you should definitely look up peanut bug. Um, there is an insect in this same super family, it's a plant hopper, but it has this giant head that looks like a peanut. It has this like very peanut shaped head, and I've always thought that they are really awesome looking, and they are a plant hopper. Now another common plant hopper that people don't really like are the spotted lantern flies. They are a plant hopper. So they are in this super family Fulgoroidea also. Oh, the white CD was in reference to a Bay's blue butterfly. Yes. Oh, yep, I missed her comment. I just finished adding the stripes to the butterfly's antenna. Aw, oh, Avea, that's perfect. I love that. Because your little beautiful little blue butterflies have the, uh, uh, the white CD around the antenna and around the eyes. Now I'm all caught up. <laughs> Very good. Why do spotted lantern flies have to be so pretty? You know what? I am not sure. I feel like I feel like they shouldn't be as pretty either. But there's there are a whole bunch of very beautiful uh, plant hoppers out there, um, and it just happened to be one of them that we got from another country that was uh, beautiful but deadly. Oh, so the characteristic on these guys, I don't know if I ever actually said it. The antenna arises underneath the eye. So it doesn't matter if you are looking at a spotted lantern fly or a peanut bug or this, I think it's a dictyopharid. Um, this guy, the all plant hoppers are going to have an antennal socket. With an antenna, the antenna is very, very thin. It's very hair-like. It's so hard to see. But it exists underneath the compound eye. And that is the defining characteristic for this super family. Um, so when you're looking at any of the other any of the other hoppers, the leaf hoppers, the tree hoppers, the frog hoppers, their antenna are going to be either on the front of their head or between their eyes. Um, in comparison to these guys where their antenna are always underneath the eyeball. And I say eyeball very generally. <laughs> It's not really a ball. All right, so 
Um, I know we've we've been here for about 30 minutes. We got to see the hoppers in front of me talk leaf frog tree plant hoppers. Uh, and I guess my question is, is there one of them that you want to focus on a little bit, look at a little closer, and maybe I'll draw it and hang out for as long as you ladies want to hang out? I know sometimes it takes a minute for uh, you to catch up with me, so I'm going to give you a minute. Does an antenna that tiny and hidden actually have any sensory use? I have to believe that it does. Um, I'm not sure what the exact sensory, what the exact sense is that they're going to be kind of relying on or leaning on. Um, my guess would be, my guess would be wind. Like being able to feel, I'm not sure. You want to draw them all. Does an antenna, you know what? I'm sure that the antenna has a use. I'm not sure what it is, like what their primary sense is. We want to draw the orange peel friend. <clears throat> Those punctations on the pronotum definitely make it look like, you're right, it definitely makes it look like an orange peel. Right, tree hopper membracity. Let's do this. So I know that when we are drawing here, I'm gonna actually here. we like to zoom out and check the length. Oh we already got the length though. What was it? It was point seven nine. From the front of the head to the back of the abdomen, I went over a little bit. Let's see, I've got to fix that. Yeah, 0.79, we're gonna call it 0.8, so that, I could probably say there's enough, uh, there's enough um, wiggle room for it to be 0.8. centimeters from the front of the head to the back of the abdomen. The, um, from the front of the head to the back of the wings, it was like about 0.92, I believe, is what I remember. Ah, Susan's got it, right? 0.79. Sounds good to me. All right. <clears throat> So my goal right off of the bat is to just give myself this really nice light outline um, that I'm going to be working at filling it in. Um, and sometimes with these, sometimes with an insect this shape, it almost makes me want to do the, com the entire outline first and then fill in the stuff in the center. But let's just see what we do. So um, if we were adding our head... The head faces down, mostly, kind of like that. So you've got this D shape where it's going to be flat on one side and rounded down on the other. The uh, mouth part is going to be coming in this direction, but I don't think we actually can see the mouth part. I'm going to very lightly give it where um, whereabouts the compound eye should be, and then I'm going to move up. So. Um, from the head, 
ahead, the pronotum expands up to right about where that um, spine is going to be. And then we are going to, let's see. <laughs> So this is how I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring this line up from the head, and I'm going to give it a spine kind of coming out towards you, and I'm going to pull this in all the way up to the top, but I still want to create this triangle. It gives it a little bit of a 3 d 3DS look. Um, so I'm going to bring this line back down, and then give it the spine on the other side. So you can see that this is kind of the front of the pronotum right here, and then this is going to be where this touches, this is that very top ridge, and it's going to come all the way back down, and it's going to have that spine, and it looks like I started in the wrong spot on my paper, but that's okay. Shorten it up just a little bit. So we've got this spine here. And I want to come back to this region and kind of meet the line on the other side. So from here, this is the beginning of the pronotum, but there's, it doesn't just go all the way to the back of the head. It looks like we're going to be zooming in and adding to this shape, but I'm just going to make it come back at an angle for now. And then once it gets about even with this first spine, it's going to go out, up, and spine. Okay. Spine. Cool. And from here, we are going to continue this line down, give ourselves a wing of sorts, and then wrap it around. It's going to be connecting right about here to the middle of this angle, right around there. And then we can add some, we're going to add just the body. So we're going to take from the bottom of the head right around here, and we're going to come through. And this is where the legs are going to be connected are right around this area. Um, so I'm not adding a whole lot of the details for the thorax just yet, but that's where the legs are connected. And then I want to make sure I give, I get this abdomen here. So it comes down right around here, and it's going to connect to that bottom. Oh, he's going to be so cute! I can just tell. So for our front leg, it's there going to be coming up, and those tarsal segments, I'm going to make them go forward. I know they're facing backwards in the microscope. Then we're going to have the middle leg go forward, but then backward. Let's see. So I'm just going to have the tibia and the tarsi come out because the femur is going to be um, kind of behind that tibia. And then I'm just going to add the hind leg coming out like that. So we know where whereabouts the legs are coming out and about how long they are. I did skip the femur on both the middle and the hind legs because in our image um, it kind of comes up and goes backwards right over the top of the right over top of itself. So you can't see them both at the same time. Cool. Let's zoom into the head. Oh. I forgot I had taken a picture. This isn't the live view right now. We're going to flip over to the live view. You know what? I don't have to turn my drawing off anymore, and I keep forgetting. Oh, 
with eyes. that that's about right right for us to look at um, now when I'm drawing her eye now that we're looking at it a little bit closer things might change just a little bit probably not too much though I'm gonna make my head go um, mine is kind of going out just a little bit I want to make sure that it's going completely straight down So I'm narrowing my head just a little bit so that it kind of straightens itself down. It was wonderful hearing from you, Avea. Happy Pride Month. So I'm going to go ahead and add our big compound eye here. And then the rest of this head. Okay. Now, from here, the front of the head, uh, we thought that the pronotum kind of angled back, but it does actually go over the entire head. So, it's going to come back to right around here, and it just... Um, angles up a little bit before it goes back out. And so as long as you have this shape that narrows down, you should be okay. In fact, there is even a little ridge that comes back over in this direction. So you can always add that if you would like. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of thicken this line right above the eye because the eye shouldn't project over the pronotum. Um, the pronotum should be protecting the head. Uh, then I'm going to take this line. I'm actually pretty happy with this um, straight line coming up here. We get that beautiful side horn here. And I think I actually am pretty happy with um, this region here. I took a minute when I was sketching it, so I'm going to just darken these angles here. But I do believe that when we come around the corner here, we're going to have to fix some of that. So um, as I am sketching, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow the edge of this pronotum, and then we'll come back and we'll add the legs. Here we are. So we're taking this guy um, right about here where they meet. It goes just a little bit higher and then that is the highest point of the pronotum. From then on we are actually moving down. So I'm going to give it more of an active slant here so that it's not so roundy. I want to make sure that it's pretty obvious that that point is the highest and then it starts to round down. Um, so then right around here where the abdomen comes out, that's where it really gets narrow. So I'm going to make sure that this arch here is complete, just um, to where the abdomen comes out. And then I'm going to do that same thing from here down. Um, I want to make sure that this 
angle here is pretty even, and then it narrows right there where the abdomen. So I'm trying to use some of our character, some of the uh, the lines that we already have to kind of determine where these are going. And I, instead of making it a totally even swoop, we want the widest point to be in that same place. So if you see where your widest point, your tallest point is on the top, that should almost line up with your tall, your furthest point on the bottom. It's kind of wide there before it goes and narrows. Alright, from there on, from here on, we are adding the spine on the end of the pronotum, and it's a darker color over here. Let's see. It goes all the way to the end of the abdomen, and it's pretty narrow. You don't want it to be completely smooth with this top line though. You want to give it its own, there we go. We want You want there to be this angle here so that when you come back in and you darken the end, it looks like almost an addition. And I'm actually going to finish our wings too. So if you come out from here, you want to go down. You can see that they're, the end of these wings are almost pointed down here. And then we're coming all the way up and we are meeting this point here. So maybe we'll zoom in a little bit more. So this is a pretty even swoop all the way to right about here, this uh, kind of narrowest, most narrow portion in the pronotum. So I'm going to take this line, and I'm going to meet it here. So cute. We love him. There's a part of me that wants to do the abdomen and then the legs last. Okay, so we've got the overall outline for our abdomen, but I want to add some of the plates in here. Um, at the, so I'm going to darken this outline just a little bit, but I'm not going to give it its full contrast until we add some more, some more features here. So the last abdominal segment is going to be cut like this, but it's also going to be divided in half. Um, don't tell me exactly how I know. I can just kind of like see it through the wing venation. <laughs> uh, I can imagine that it's there, as one of my professors once told me. Now, um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to do it without the fly. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, we have eight or nine abdominal segments that are visible from a lateral f point of view. Um, it's possible that there are more that I'm not seeing, but the point is that these abdominal segments are very narrow. Um, they're in the end that there are is a whole bunch of them. Very obliging of this guy to see <laughs> have clear wings. Yes, exactly. So his wings are completely clear, so at least we can see his abdomen. Um, it's difficult to see exactly how many abdominal segments he's got, but my guess is that it's about nine. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to start it here. 
And you want to create each one of these kind of boxes individually because they aren't, um, it isn't one smooth edge, but it's not like even steps like a hymenopteran would have. And actually the top segment of this, the last one, is going to be more rectangular and the bottom one is going to be triangular, something like this. And I'm just going to kind of darken this in at the end because I know that they exist there, but um, I'm not exactly sure how wide they are and I'm just going to leave it kind of like, kind of like that. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Alright, cool. What we can do maybe is add a little bit There's a part of me that wants to add a little bit of the wing venation in here, kind of like this, or maybe even just kind of this darker piece here. Let's see. I'm not going to darken it in, though. Maybe. It has some cool wing venation, but I don't know if it's going to mess with our already done sketch of the abdomen. So I'm going to go very light, and I'm just going to add some of these kind of longer swooping veins in the wings, just to give it that opportunity to uh, appear as though there is something in front of the abdomen. I'm okay with that. Yes, do the wing venation. <sighs> All right. We'll zoom in. We'll look at it closer. will fix it because I think that I uh, there was a moment that I got a little tired and I just started giving it some lines and I think that we can do even better So we've got this longer wing vein along the bottom half. It's a longer, thicker vein, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of double this line on the bottom here uh, until we get to be around about there, and then it's off the camera right now, so we'll have to be, we'll be moving the microscope shortly. Um, then we've got another one that comes out just above it and extends the length also. There is a small cross vein right here at the very, very base right around here, and then up here on the top we have a whole other region that comes up and then goes out and it follows the front edge right around here, um, so I'm going to darken that space too. Now from this top one, if you go just a little bit back behind this cross vein, that's where this next vein kind of comes out round about here, and from here we go up and we create a V. So that's going to be one cell happening right here. We've got this one, we've got that one. And then you've got another arch coming out from this one. All right, let's see where they go. Okay, so this top one here comes all the way down to where it gets narrow and then swoops up. It creates a loop that goes up in that upward direction, whereas this one here swoops down 
and meets this one back again. So we're creating these, almost these little cells within the wings. Um, right here in the middle, that's where these two connect. The one that was coming down along the bottom. Then we have a bonus cell that comes out along this bottom here. Connects to the side vane twice. It's getting dark over the abdomen, but that's okay. When I redo this in pen, then it'll look a whole lot better. This is one of those sketches that'll look better in pen. All right, we got this, we've got that. From here, off of the top of this cell, it's gonna come down and touch the bottom. And then we have almost these little bubbles happening here. All right, you know what? I am not unhappy with that wing venation. And what I will do is darken the entire abdomen underneath. And then, that actually doesn't look bad. Cool. We just have so many punctations. That's true. All of the punctations up there to make it look like an orange. But we also have legs. I'm adding, I want to add the, the depth of the legs because these are just stick legs. So we've got the femur coming up, the tibia coming down, and then I'm going to add the tarsal segments kind of moving forward. They're, they're set in threes. Um, two kind of rectangular segments and then almost a heart-shaped segment at the end that's got those claws. Now with our middle leg, it's going to be the same except backwards rather than forwards. So I'm moving backwards, and then I've got one, two, three, and claw on this insect is incredibly spinose. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of spines here. Um, and it is pretty long, um, like half of the length of the abdomen. So you want it to kind of come out from the base of these legs, but you want it to go really far back. And then we're going to be adding a whole bunch of spines. And from here, we also can add the uh, three tarsal segments. So, one, two, three with the claws. And I guess the only thing left is these punctations to make it look like an orange. I will admit that this orange color is not the original color of this insect. So sadly, it doesn't look like an orange if you were to see it in the wild. This is one of those insects, the tree hoppers, the frog hoppers, they tend to lose a lot of their colors. So I believe this one used to be bright green. You need 
so many more punctations. You get to a point and you're like, yep, there's a good number of them on there, but then, because it's an orange, you've got to add so many more. Like the texture of an orange. Well, I'm going to leave mine like that. He's pretty cute. I'm pretty happy. Yeah, so, um, in some insects, like, like the tree hoppers, and then some grasshoppers even, their green, instead of turning pale, turns brown. And this, it's hard for me to get it to look brown because on so many different angles it looks orange, but really if you look at it, um, if you look at it in real life, the, oh, you almost saw the true color of it. My camera keeps wanting to over brighten it. Let me see if I can stop it from doing that. I might be able to get it closer. Forcibly turn the brightness down. That is more of a true color. Oh, it just autoed really low. Come on, don't go that low. Yeah, more like this is this is more of a true color for this insect. Um, not that really, really bright orange, but it's still orange in hue, which is probably why the microscope kept picking it up like that. Um, you know, browns can be based in orange, and they can be based in um, a couple of different colors. Brown. Can't you have also a purplish brown? And a reddish brown? And a greenish brown? Yeah! So this is more of an orangey brown. I don't know if that makes sense. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so you know what we did? We are a little bit past an hour, and... I am pretty happy with our sketch today and the fact that we talked about all of the hoppers. Um, I could just continue to add punctations to this friend here, but I'm going to suggest that you go and you Google tropical tree hoppers because I showed you some cool pronotal shields or some, some really cool pronotums, but there is a tree hopper out there that it's pronotum. It kind of comes up away from its body and then it does this thing and then it has balls on the end of it. Um, and some of them almost look like little Christmas trees the way that they, um, the way that they have these like long pronotums and then they have these like crazy formations on the tops of their bodies. So, I love this friend here, but you should definitely go check out some of the tropical tree hoppers because they have some crazy stuff and they're beautiful and spiny and awesome. And one day I will see them and or take pictures of them in real life. All right, so let me go ahead. Um, Thank you, uh, Susan and Ava, for hanging out with me today. I super appreciate it. Um, I am pretty happy with our tree hopper we sketched today. It looks like these. Um, and uh, I'm always happy to come back to our hoppers and draw a frog hopper or the leaf hopper. We may have done the leaf hopper already with all those really pretty colors. Um, but I'm always willing to come back and do um, maybe even the plant hopper with the crazy face. Um, so 
Uh, if you are curious, I do teach on a platform called OutSchool for the little ones, 5 to 8, 9 to 12 year olds. If you know little people in your life that love bugs or love drawing, send them in my direction. Um, that is a reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Luckily, those of you who are out there watching are already subscribed, so um, thank you very much. Um, you can reach out to my email address at trisha at theinsectopia.com if you would like to email me or show me your drawing or send me a picture of a really cool bug that you're not sure what it is. I love to identify and talk bugs with everybody. So I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your week and stay buggy.